want to introduce someone who I have a tremendous amount of respect for. He has been growing his business. I'm talking about eyes on the prize the entire time, never wavering in his commitment, always available when someone needs him, no matter what coast or what uh, time zone he is in. He is there to help you to have success. You guys have seen him traveling all across the country, not just the East Coast, but he's gone from east to west to help people to do well in their five links endeavor. And guess what? He's now a newly promoted senior vice president, which means he's positioned to make a lot of money in this opportunity. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce to the call none other than newly promoted senior vice president, Mr. Ray Hendrickson. Ray, are you there? I am, I am, I am Senior Vice President Lisa Douglas Doe. I can't tell you how humbling it is to be on the roster of trainers for this incredible list of people who have graced this call on Sunday evenings. I I must admit, I've had the privilege of being on a main stage as a national director, not once, but twice. I've had the privilege to work alongside Diamond Senior Vice President Tupac Derenicourt at the Diamond Mines Boot Camp, along with National Director Mariko Turner. I've had the privilege of hosting and then uh, and co-hosting the Vitamin Call during the day. But the roster that comes in on Sunday night, oh boy. This is the best of the best, best. And so to be on this call with you, sister, knowing the kind of commitment that you've demonstrated and exhibited from the moment I got started, watching you and your husband Tillman push the ball forward so that not one but two individual respective senior vice presidents live under the same household, which means there's two senior vice president incomes and two senior vice president BMWs and two of everything. It is a very humbling and, and, and privileged experience to be on the call tonight. So I'm excited. Thank you so much for introducing me. I, I, I'm just in awe. I'm just in awe. Uh, to be on a call this evening. And so hats off to you and your husband, and hats off to the mission statement for Team Power. Isn't that incredible? Lisa, I tell you, when I was in the Marine Corps, they would teach us, if you don't have a mission statement, then chances are you're not on a mission. And if you're not on a mission, then you're going to fail 100% of the time. And so, ladies and gentlemen, take it from silver, Senior Vice President Lisa Douglas Doe, make sure you develop a mission statement, and if you don't have a mission statement, use Team Power's mission statement, and that way you can be assured that you are on a mission. Thank you so much, Lisa Douglas Doe, Senior Vice President Extraordinaire. Thank you so much. I got so much to cover. Man, I got a call a couple weeks back from our illustrious Diamond who was all over the boards during the corporate call, if you didn't hear. Um... And he asked me, because of my impending promotion, to host one of these evening's calls. And I'm thinking, wow, how do you come behind the diamonds and the double platinums and the platinums and the super producing senior vice presidents, the people that I've looked up to my whole five links career? How do you come after that? And then uh, he just gave me a pat on the back and said, listen, you know what we need to accomplish, develop a training that would be profitable for those who are listening, irrespective of position. And so I took a deep breath, grabbed a cup of Montevita, sat at my computer, at my little desk, on my, uh, at my place here in Maui, and I decided to formulate an incredible training for you all. I have an incredible training. It's an incredible training. I don't know how much I'm going to get through because I have a tendency to uh, overwhelm in terms of making sure I have enough resources and information. But I want to start by introducing you to someone that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. She, like Senior Vice President Lisa Douglas, though, is always in the forefront. She's always out there paving the way, making it easier for us to succeed. She is the voice of excitement and enthusiasm. She's the voice of hope. She's somebody I have a tremendous amount of respect for. She knows 100% of what it takes to succeed in business. She's been successful inside and outside of Five Links, 
she's created a lot of success for herself in a very short time, but she also has traversed across the country doing the same thing for other people. And if you know anything about her, she has a monopoly on having fun. So let me bring to the call none other than Senior Vice President Linda Scott Reed. Are you there? I am, Ray. Can you hear me? Awesome. I'm so happy to have you on the call. Ms. Scott, how are you? I'm absolutely fantastic, sir. Thank you for asking. Awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have top producing Senior Vice President Linda Scott Reed on the phone because in the last few weeks, I have been honored in ways that cannot be measured in human terms. Do you know this super producing superstar of a senior vice president called me on the phone and asked me to do a three-way call for her? And I thought, what an honor, what a privilege. I better have my A game on tight, and I need to be able to represent so that whomever's on the phone will decide to join her business. So I asked her to get on the phone just to give you a third-party kind of testimonial on the power of the three-way call. Senior Vice President Linda Scott-Reed. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you so much, um, Senior Vice President Mr. Ray Hendrickson. So sounds so good to say that. I want to give it back to you, um, you know, for all you do and your consistency and persistency. And giving it back to Silver Senior Vice President Lisa douglas So my bestie. Guys, you know what? The three-way call is the amazing thing. To me, it is the seal of the close deal. And if you're not doing them, you need to do a lot more. Now, myself as a leader, I don't even try and close my own people because that's not the system, right? The system is pique their interest, move them through the baseball diamond, get them on a three-way call with a senior partner, and that will help to close them. I've done multiple three-way calls with um, Silver Senior Vice President Lisa Douglas Doe. If I have a young lady on the phone and I feel that she can identify with Lisa's background, you know, Lisa's energy is always amazing, so I know it's going to be a done deal. Well, the other day I had a young man out of um, – Michigan, and he just he he was interested in the business, but very skeptical, and he needed someone to kind of like seal the deal for him. And Ray just popped into my mind because he's very a matter of fact. He can give you details about the opportunity without telling you about the opportunity, but make you want to move to action. So I, I text him really quickly. It's like, hey, can you do a three way? And he was uh, able. He was available, so I was grateful. And I got him on the phone with this young man. I did the normal edifying that we we normally supposed to do, and Ray not only knocked the ball out of the park, he knocked the ball out of the park. Not only did the guy want to get signed up, is getting signed up in the deal, he was so grateful because he had just heard Ray on the vitamin call that morning. See, guys, with me, when I pick someone's interest and they're not ready to get signed in yet or they're not sure what they want to do, I put them on a vitamin call. I said, listen, plug into some training, dial into this call every morning. If you missed it, here's a playback. Check it out and just hear all the different people's lives who are being changed all around the country. And so he heard Ray that morning, and to be able to speak to Ray that evening, it was absolutely phenomenal, but Ray was so good in terms of pulling out what this young man needed, why the opportunity would be good for him, and a matter of fact for this, a matter of fact for that. It was a done deal. When Ray was done, the guy was like, okay, I'll have my money on Friday. So, guys, giving it back to Senior Vice President Mr. Ray Hendrickson, a stellar job. I'm grateful. And, guys, we have to use each other. We have to use our senior leadership. The last thing you want to do is try and close the deal yourself. That's the worst thing you can do. So giving it back to you, Senior Vice President Mr. Ray Hendrickson. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you kindly. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it first and you heard it best from Senior Vice President Linda Scott Reed. She talked about the power of the three-way call. And I know we've kind of breached this conversation in time past, and the three-way call has a purpose, and the purpose is to introduce a separate and respected party whose responsibility it becomes to convey valuable, valuable information and to move that person toward the next base and to get that person to make a decision without sitting on a fence too long. And so you want to use that edified person to do the three-way and you use that edified person to close them. But here's what I want to ask you all. We use the three ways for great recruiting success. In fact, no one has lasting, sustainable 
and duplicatable success without the three-way. So we understand its value. But here's my question. If it works so well for recruiting, why aren't we using it for customer acquisition too? If we know the three-way call has established multi-level marketing companies for the last 60 years, then we understand its value. We understand its impact. We understand its significance. So then how come we aren't using it for customer acquisition as well? The reason why I wanted to touch on this is because I've been having a series of conversations with teams across the country, and I'm thankful that being promoted to senior vice president has given you know, a lot of our teams out there um, the permission to reach out to me. And so I'm sharing with them some of the things that we've been training on on my particular team how people get started and get qualified in the first seven days. Well, I want to ask you to consider this. When you first get started in five links, isn't it petrifying to try to talk to somebody about the business? We put a lot of emphasis on recruiting, but to recruit without the component of customer acquisition doesn't yield any benefit to you. So we got to learn how to duplicate both components. Now, I love the fact that you can get 25 points or 25 customers or 50 customers and never have to get more customers. You can get paid because of the customer acquisition bonuses, and you can get paid because of the, the customer club bonuses. That's great. And you never have to go out and get another customer. I love that. It's almost like eating your Brussels sprouts first. Yeah, you got roast beef and you got mashed potatoes, but you got okra on the plate. You got broccoli on the plate. You got spinach on the plate. You got Brussels sprouts on the plate. When I was a kid, I used to eat the Brussels sprouts first. I saved the best for last, but that does not mean we shouldn't learn how to master that component of our business because it's going to be duplicated. And so this is a very big way of saying maybe we should reconsider how to get customers. Let me show you what I mean. The customer acquisition script that I developed sounds like this, and you're familiar with some of its components because it's standard network marketing protocol, but some of it is exclusive to, to, to me. So listen to this. Customer acquisition script. Somebody just gets started, right? We've got to get them qualified. We've got to get some customers. Our goal is to get them uh, the 12 points, not six points, but 12 points. 12 points pays them. Six points pays you. I'm not looking at new business partners as a paycheck. I'm looking at them in an effort to help create income for them, so I always push them to 12 points, not six points. So for me, qualification, although technically six points, for me and their future, it's 12 points. How do I get them to 12 points? So they just get started. The first thing I give a new IMR, when they get started, document 715. Within the first three days that they get started, document 715 is what I call the point schedule. It has all the products and services, all of the points on it, whether or not it's a qualifying point or otherwise, what, how much you get paid, CV, it has all of that information right there. By the third day, because by day number three, they should have completed their list, because I only give them 48 hours, which is the third day, to complete this list of 200 names or more. And if I need to sit down and help them, I help them develop this list, because the list, ladies and gentlemen, is real, live cash. And that list, albeit directly owned by that new IMR, is really, number one, your long-term residual income, and number two, your insurance against that new person quitting. So now you've helped me develop this list. It's day number three. What happens on day number three? Well, I could certainly go through a myriad of videos online and look at all the lifestyle videos, flag on the play, too much too soon. Or I could go get lost in the eternal abyss of my virtual office, too much too soon. A new infant gets spoon-fed small bite-sized chunks. I'm not trying to overwhelm my new person. In fact, for the first 7 to 14 days, I don't want them doing anything other than what I tell them to do. That way I can be sure they get exactly what they want or what they need 
when I need them to have it. So we got the list done, 48 hours, 200 names and numbers at least or more. I'm going to give them document 715. And what is on document 715? Everything that we offer. So now we're going to convert their homes. I'm not going to encourage them to create a bill because that's not sustainable long term. But I want to find the things in their home that they are accustomed to using already. And I'm going to show them on this document how they can save money and make money at the same time. So now naturally when they get started, they have PDN, four points, right? Well, if they don't get the two points the night they get started, well, two days later, guess what? They're getting those points because we're walking through their homes. Oh, I see you drink coffee. Great. Did you know that we offer a healthful coffee, one that has MCT oil in it, one that contributes to longevity, one that helps you lose his weight, suppresses your appetite naturally, helps your brain and cognitive function improve, and helps your heart function better? Did you know that? Oh, you don't drink coffee? Well, do you like, I see you have tea in the cupboard. Well, great. We can get the tea. Well, that's another point. Oh, I see you have cable. Great. Well, did you know we have a product called T-E-E-V-E-E? -E -E? It'll save you substantially over the traditional carriers that are out there, and you, don't, you can eliminate the boxes, and it's mobile. You can take it with you. You can, get, you can get your favorite TV shows while you're at the dentist's office. You can watch your favorite TV shows while you're, getting, um, you're waiting for the bus stop, you can, while you're sitting on the toilet. Whatever it is, you have your favorite TV shows accessible to you 100% of the time. Did you know that? Well, great. That's another one or two points. Now that I'm walking them through their homes and they can see their homes on paper, they can see cash being generated on paper, they're inclined to do it. Once you put something in writing, the way the psychology works for the average consumer changes completely. Because it's written down, they add a lot more credibility to it. So why not use an official Five Links document? It says Five Links right on it? Great. So now we're going to walk through your home once we're done. Let's just assume you only got eight points. Well, great. We need four more points. And we're going to do this in the first seven days, ladies and gentlemen. The first seven days are exclusive to customer acquisition. We're not talking about recruiting. I'm not going to talk about it because I need them to be set up for success. And so I talk about recruiting when they first get started, but I'm pointing toward the future because I need them to get that customer acquisition bonus. Foundationally, here's what we need, 12 points. So we're at eight points. We need four more points. Well, ladies and gentlemen, where do the other four points come from? <gasps> You said it, the list that you spent the last two days developing. On that list of 200 names, you've already checked off the top 25 people who would do anything for you. Guess why? Those are going to be the people that we solicit for customer acquisition. Now, we opened up our call tonight talking about the value of the three-way call. So you've got this magnificent list. It's well laid out. You've got the names on the left side. You've got the relationship in the middle. You've got the phone numbers on the right side. Well, what do you do with this list? You checked off the top 25 people uh, who would do anything for you. You know, these are the people that's going to say, yes, baby, whatever you need, no matter what it is, they're willing to do it. Well, great. What do we do now? And having some of the conversations I've had here lately across the country, new people are actually picking up the phone and calling people flag on a play. They don't know what to say. And secondly, when a question comes up, and they will, if that new person doesn't have an answer, whatever credibility they had when they first made the phone call is completely washed away. And so me as the upline, I've got to safeguard my business. And I've got to do that by putting my new business partners in a position to win more often than not. That's how I secure and safeguard my income going forward. So instead of having them call someone, I'm going to ask them to send a text. What should the text message say? Glad you asked. The text message should say, I need your help. I need a huge favor from you. Recently started my own business and I'm a few customers away from my next big promotion. If I could show you a way 
to save a few thousand dollars a year on the services you use every day, would you mind giving one of the services a try? That is it. Push send. The message goes out. Now, why do we use text messaging? Because, again, based on consumer psychology, people will answer a text message within 24 hours versus email, which will languish in your email for months and months and months. Many of you all have hundreds of emails you haven't even opened yet. And that's amidst the sea of hundreds of others that you have opened. And once you go past one or two days with email, forget about it. That email gets lost because there's so many you have to go through in order to find that one. Text message zzz, shows up right on your hip, and it compels you to answer it. Now, here's the statistic. 90% of the people who answer this message will say yes, or what is it about? Now, if they say no, no harm, no foul, you put them on the shelf, we'll come back later. But if they say yes, or what is it about? Here's where it gets good. So the first thing we've done through this text message is we've identified a customer because the person answered. You've asked them, would you want me to tell you? They said, yes, or what is it about? What does that message mean to you? I want you to sell me something. Now we've got to determine what they want to buy and when they want to buy it. So we developed a subsequent response. Well, what's the response? Watch me now. Between cable, internet, home phone, gas, electricity, home security, and health care, which bills are hurting you the most? That's the language. That's the language. The goal is to keep your new rep as far away from questions as possible. And so the questions that we're asking are either closed-ended questions or very specifically pointed questions. Now, if you ask me a question like this, between cable, internet, home phone, gas, electricity, home security, and healthcare, which bills are hurting you the most, I'm going to be inclined, more often than not, to answer in line with your question. Nobody's going to say, well, none of them is hurting me. Most of the time, people will say, all of them are hurting me. Or, worst case scenario, they'll tell you one or two of those items. So now, what have we determined? They've told you they want to be sold, and they told you what they want to be sold. Well, now we've got to determine when they want to be sold. And I know you're wondering, well, what does the three-way have to do with all of this? Stay with me now. Stay with me. Come close. Come closer. Let me whisper in your ear. Let's determine the third component. The third component is the third response. What should that third text message be? What time tomorrow can you give me five minutes of your undivided attention for me to show you how? So now what did we determine, y'all? We determined that somebody wants to be sold. We determined that they determine what to be sold, and we've determined they want to be sold on a particular date and time. Guess what that is? That's a legitimate bona fide prospect. If you don't have those three components, you don't have a customer prospect. Now, what time tomorrow? Why tomorrow? Because we need to set this appointment in a calendar. We're not going to do this willy-nilly. We're not going to do it haphazardly. We're going to set the appointment and put it in a calendar. What time tomorrow? Let me prepare myself. What time tomorrow can you give me five minutes of your undivided attention? By the way, let me just take a step back. If in your subsequent response you say between cable, Internet, home phone, gas, electricity, and so on, make sure that your prospective customer is in a state where gas and electricity is offered. And also, if your particular team is focusing in on a particular product or service, then amend the script to suit your specific needs. This is the script that I use because, by and large, the customers that I have are in states where we offer electricity. And electricity is a loss leader. Let me explain what I mean. Have you ever gotten a newspaper, and in the newspaper there was a coupon for a Dell computer that normally sells for $20,000? They're giving it away for $20? 
You ever have that? You ever see that? And a thousand people run to the store to get that one computer that they have. They only have one. But once you're in the store, you're going to buy something. That's the psychology. And so gas and electricity, they don't pay a whole lot of money, but it's the easiest service that I know to give away. Now, once I've given it away and you're a happy customer, it is exponentially easier to sell you more stuff than to go out and get a brand new customer. Just stay with me. This is all steeped in consumer psychology. So now, you've asked that final question, what time tomorrow can you give me five minutes of your undivided attention for me to show you how? Let me take a commercial break for a second. At the top of our call, you heard Silver Senior Vice President Lisa Douglas Doe declare that we are in business. And as a business owner, because that's what each and every one of us are, your $249 that you use to become an IMR has allowed you, therefore, to become a business owner. Somewhere along the line, we've got to assume the posture of a business owner. And a business owner asks questions like, what time tomorrow can you give me five minutes of your undivided attention versus can I call you tomorrow? And if you call them tomorrow, they've got a thousand things going on. They're raising dogs. They've got cock- you know, uh, roosters in the background. Children are playing and hollering and screaming. No, 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 no. I need five minutes of your undivided attention. The divine principle says we have not because we ask not. We just have to learn how to ask diplomatically. And you'll be surprised how many times people will give you what you want. So now they've determined that tomorrow they want to be spoken to at 4 o'clock. Confirm the appointment. Are you sure 4 p.m. works for your schedule? I know you're a busy person. Hopefully tonight, I don't know if we'll be able to get there, but I want to cover appointment setting because appointment setting is another area that we could improve on. Have you ever set up a three-way call and the person never picks up the phone? You know why? You didn't set an appointment. Have you ever gotten somebody on a phone call or a three-way and uh, they were scheduled to come out to a BOM or a PBR and they didn't show up? You know why? You didn't schedule an appointment. We got to remember, we are not the most important thing on somebody else's list. So if that is the case, then you've got to make such an incredible impression that they would be afraid of missing this appointment. One of the ways you do that is by asking them three to five times, are they sure this is going to work? Are you sure you're going to be available? Are you sure you're going to make it? And now on my team, we actually have somebody else, after we've gotten through that appointment setting process, to call and confirm one more time. And we'll do that on another call. But again, appointment setting is one of those skills that we have to develop. It will turn your business around overnight. Okay, so now let me get back to my point. They've determined that they want to be spoken to tomorrow at 4 p.m. So what's going to happen between now and 4 p.m.? Well, here's what we know. We've got an appointment at 4 p.m. tomorrow, and this person has made a decision to buy Internet. So we know those two things. Now, I'm brand new. What do I know about Internet? I don't know anything about Internet. I don't know anything about Internet in as much as anybody else does. And so I need help. I set this appointment for tomorrow at 4 because I'm going to solicit upline help. Enter the three-way call. So I booked the appointment, and now I'm prepared for my call. I make sure my upline, Senior Vice President Lisa Douglas Doe, Senior Vice President Linda Scott Reed, Diamond Senior Vice President Tupac Renacor, Platinum Senior Vice President Kirk and Timmy Keys, Platinum Senior Vice President Daryl Huckabee or Thomas, whomever you're working with. You let them know, hey, listen, I got this customer acquisition call tomorrow. Can you get on this call with me? Let me tell you something. The people whose names I just mentioned, they know exactly what time it is. And so by the time, by this time, the new IMR has switched over some of the services in their home because we went over document 715, and by day number 3-4, they're starting to move some of those things over, so they're familiar with the process of switching over. However, on the call that was scheduled, 
that new business partner should be on the phone with their upline or someone designated on your team to handle this. Because remember, that person is new. They're going to be petrified. And here's why you want me on the line. Have you ever walked into a situation where the bully is in the room, but you got your big brother with you? Don't you automatically have a manufactured sense of security? The day before when the bully was in the room, you were petrified. You tried to get out the room as fast as you could. But when your big brother or big sister's there, it's like, mess with me now. And so that new upline, that upline is going to be on the phone with that new IMR because it minimizes the stress on that new IMR. Remember, the second greatest fear that mankind has is the fear of talking. And so if I can minimize that stress, I want to do that for my new business partner. I want the business to be easy to learn, easy to do, and easy to duplicate. And so my function, help minimize the stress for that new IMR but it also secures my income because they're on the line getting customers, in essence, for both of us. My second responsibility for that call is to answer the questions. I don't want my new person answering the questions. They give one wrong answer and the customer finds out otherwise, there goes the opportunity. The third reason, and absolutely positively critical, is the reverse edification of that new business partner. You got this new person on the phone with somebody that they love and respect but don't really care about them in terms of business because they haven't been successful, reverse edification bridges the gap. Let me tell you about reason number four. Reason number four, ladies and gentlemen, allows you to upsell the prospect. Anybody in sales, understand, once you close the deal, it automatically opens up the door for more stuff. So the moment they sign, seal, and deliver that first service or product, now you can show them everything else we got. Number five, take the time to walk the customer through the sign-up process for that product or service. This person, this new IMR, okay, let me say it in business terms. Every new IMR that is added to your business team is a pseudo-employee for you, and they have two jobs. One, bring you more pseudo-employees, and two, bring you more customers. So now as they're out there building your business for you, you want to secure their labor by ensuring people get signed up, whether it be as customers or business partners. Now, the sixth component to this is after the deal is signed on, you could ask the customer if the customer is interested in making money and invite them to the next meeting. So typically what happens is we bring people to the BOM and then make them customers. Well, we could do it the other way as well. It's edification and the three-way call is in place. And so let me give you an example of how this would work. Let's just say we made the call. And we're calling John. You pick up the phone and say, hi, John, this is Steve. Thanks for taking my call. You have no idea how much your support means to me because I'm new. And because I don't know much, let me introduce you to someone that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, edification script, edification script, insert here. Now you've done the edification I say, hey, John, thank you again for taking the call. I promise I won't take long. I would like to thank you for supporting Steve's business. We're in the process of helping him or her generate an additional income through products and services that typically help people save money on their current expenses. And I'm sure Steve said you'd be willing to, by the way, and Steve said you'd be willing to help him today. Is that correct? So now I am validating. I am assessing. I am evaluating. I'm making sure I'm probing this person to make sure we're all on the same page. Steve said you'd be willing to help. So that goes in line with the question that Steve sent him in the text message. Would you be willing to help? Now, guess what? This person is going to say, yes, 
What is that? Why is that important? Because a sale begins when someone says yes. I'm going to go on to say, I understand you were interested in lowering your cable bill. Is that right? Yes. I get another yes. Great. Now I take the occasion to explain the features and benefits and the potential savings of the product or service. And so guess what? John is listening to me go through the great opportunity he's got to save money and have his TV on his cell phone and his iPad and five different accounts, users, and save a bunch of money, get rid of the cut the cord and send the boxes back. So he's getting bought in. And so I'm going to ask the question that was initially iterated by the IMR. So if I could show you a way to lower your cable bill substantially without the loss of any of your favorite shows or sporting events, would you be willing to give the service a try today? What am I doing? I'm asking for the money. I'm asking for the sale. And if you're not completely satisfied, John, I'll see to it that you get a full refund, no questions asked. How does that sound? What am I looking for? Two more yeses. The moment I get those two yeses, great. Now what if he says no? Send him the seven-day trial and tell him about the other products and services we offer to see if he'll bite one of those. Because remember, he did say he would support your new IMR. So that's why I'm on the phone, to close the deal. We've got to close the deal. So let's assume that this is what he wants. Great. I walk him through the sign-up process, make sure he's got all of his login information and everything is correct. Once he's done, I'm going to turn around and thank him for his support. Thank you for your support, John. IMR, Scott said, has, has, has taken a huge step forward toward his next promotion thanks to you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to him who has my direct information, and I'm happy to assist. By the way, here we go. Did you know that our firm also offers, and I'm going to list all the other products and services, coffee, tea, credit card processing, telemarketing, energy, cable, Internet. Oh, did you know that? And he's going to say yes or no. Chances are he's going to say no. And I'm going to ask, well, aside from saving on your cable bill, John, is there any other area that we could help you with? which, by the way, would significantly help Scott in the process. If he says yes, then great. We're going to take the time and either do it at that moment because I'm going to ask him, great, do you have time now or should we schedule a time to go over some of those details? If we can do it at that occasion, great, we'll do it then. If not, we'll book the appointment and we're going to confirm that appointment. Are you sure tomorrow at 4 o'clock works? I know you're traveling. You've got a lot on your plate. Just want to make sure that 4 o'clock absolutely, positively, unequivocally works for your schedule because I'm going to make myself available for this. Once the appointment is booked, one last thing, John. Did you know that we're helping Scott generate a sizable income by helping his friends and family members save money on essential products and services? Just as a courtesy and a way to say thank you for supporting his business, let me ask you, if the money was right and it could fit into your schedule, would you be open to taking a look at an income-producing business opportunity? Isn't that incredible? That is the three-way call. So now what does your IMR do? They're sitting there with pain in their cheeks because they're smiling so hard. They're thinking, this is a simple business, and they're actually helping me get customers. Wow, I could see myself getting to ET by the end of next week. I could see myself getting to ED by the end of the month. I could see myself getting to national director and senior vice president if they're helping me to this degree. I could see it. I love this team. I love this business. What happens if we don't help them? I can't see myself getting to ET. I can't see myself getting to ED, ND, SVP. Man, I hate this business because it doesn't work. It does work. We just have to collaborate on a more intimate level, especially now that they changed the compensation plan. Help me, somebody. And so that was what I wanted to cover as it relates to the three-way call. I'm telling you, if we implement this three-way process for customer acquisition, everyone will be in the 25 customer club. Everyone will hit ET in 30 days. Everyone. And so I'm excited about that. 
This is the first time I've had the opportunity to teach it nationally, and um, it's been working for us like pound cake. You like pound cake? So now watch this. What if that IMR sends out that peak interest script and TV is not the product they want to buy? If the customer buys anything other than TV, then as a gift for supporting your new business partner's business, you're going to give it to them for free. Seven-day trial. It allows you to ingratiate yourself to that customer and rope them in to becoming a potential TV customer along with getting referrals after the fact. Because trust me, if they get the seven-day trial and they actually use it, they'll be impressed. And when you talk to them on day number six or seven before their credit card is charged, that's a huge point. Before the, It shouldn't be plug and play. It should be high tech and high touch. We've gotten away from high touch, but we've got to be able to reach out and touch our customers. We're looking to build long-term, mutually beneficial relationships where they're saving money and bringing us business, and we're making money and providing them with a service. And so we give them this free seven-day trial just for the sake of supporting Scott's business with coffee or tea or with whatever else that we are offering this prospective candidate. And then on day number six, hey, how'd you like the service? If it's a terrible experience, at least they would uh, appreciate the touch, and they won't have something negative to say about you, Scott, or the business. And so these are things that we can employ to safeguard our incomes going forward and secure our legacies as well. I wanted to cover appointment setting. I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of time. I had to cut some of this short, but I don't have a lot of time. But let me give you an example of appointment setting as far as my training is concerned. When a new person gets started, there are multiple ways to invite somebody to an exposure. Right? There's the three-way approach where you do edification and you get them on the phone with somebody else. But there's also the video approach. And if you remember, on the baseball diamond, base number one is a magazine, a video. Well, how many times have you sent a video to somebody and they haven't watched it? Well, how do you get them to watch it? So this is an example. This is just an example of appointment setting because I don't have a lot of time to go through it for every scenario. This is an example. This is how I get people to watch a video. I pick their interest if the money was right and it could fit into your schedule or if I found something we could do together to make some money, what do you want me to tell you? They say yes, or what is it about, which is another way of saying yes. And because I have 200 names on this list, I can't three-way all 200 names, so I want to get the video out to some people so that I can make sure I encourage enough of them to get to my first BOM, first PBR. I do that with a video. So now here's my first question the moment they say yes or what is it about. If I send you a brief video that explains what I'm so excited about, would you promise to watch it today? What am I looking for, ladies and gentlemen? A yes or a no? I don't care which one you give me. I need a yes or a no. If the answer is yes, then I'm going to explain it's under 20 minutes and it answers 95% of the questions that most people have. After you've watched it, what time today can I call you back? That's a close-ended question, which basically becomes a yes. Once you get a specific time, great. Are you sure whatever specific time they gave you will work for you? What am I looking for? Another yes. Great. I'll call you back at whatever time that they said. Or you can even interject, barring any emergencies. Or how good are you at keeping your appointments? I will call you back at whatever specific time they mentioned. I can't wait to hear what you think, and then and only then do I send them the video. Because they've said yes three to five times, now psychologically they're committed. You've always heard people say, your word is your bond. And so I'm going to hold that over their head. If they don't watch the video, guess what you have now? You got a great big bag of guilt that you can use to get them to watch the video. But you said you would. And so I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. I want to give people an opportunity to answer, to ask questions. So I'm going to open up the queue. The queue is open. Hit star six. Jump in the queue if you need to, answer, to ask a question. Um, just hit star six. 
Let me know if this was profitable to you. Uh, we're mapping this out so that it becomes a PowerPoint and I could get it out to the whole team. But um, this is an area that I think we can concentrate on by using the three-way to secure more customers, becoming a killer customer acquisition firm, getting to 12 points in the first seven days, and the rest of the month remaining um, kind of gear our attentions exclusively toward uh, getting to ET and then ED. So if you have any questions, additions, amendments, subtractions, here's your opportunity to do that. Just hit star six, jump into the queue.